The Lotus of the True Law. Homage to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Sadharma Pandarika Sutra. Translated by H. Kern, 1884. Sacred Books of the East, Vol XXI. Sacred Texts.com. Chapter I. Introductory. Thus have I heard. Once upon a time the Lord was staying at Ragagriha, on the Gridrakuta mountain, with a numerous assemblage of monks, twelve hundred monks, all of them arhats, stainless, free from depravity, self-controlled, thoroughly emancipated in thought and knowledge, of noble breed, like unto, great elephants, having done their task, done their duty, acquitted their charge, reached the goal, in whom the ties which bound them to existence were wholly destroyed, whose minds were thoroughly emancipated by perfect knowledge, who had reached the utmost perfection in subduing all their thoughts, who were possessed of the transcendent faculties, eminent disciples, such as the venerable Agneta Kundanya, the venerable Asvajit, the venerable Vashpa, the venerable Mahanaman, the venerable Badrikal, the venerable Mahakajyapa, the venerable Kajyapa of Uravalva, the venerable Kajyapa of Nadi, the venerable Kajyapa of Gaya, the venerable Saraputra, the Venerable Mahamad Galyayana, the Venerable Mahakatyayana, the Venerable Anirudh, the Venerable Riveda, the Venerable Kapina, the Venerable Gavampati, the Venerable Pilandavitsa, the Venerable Vakula, the Venerable Bharadvaga, the Venerable Mahakaushthila, the Venerable Nanda, alias Mahananda, the Venerable Upananda, the Venerable Sundarananda, the Venerable Purna Maitreya the Venerable Subhuti, the Venerable Rahula, with them yet other great disciples, as the Venerable Ananda, still under training, and two thousand other monks, some of whom still under training, the others masters, with six thousand nuns having at their head Mahapragapati, and the Nanya Sadhara, the mother of Rahula. Along with her train, further, with eighty thousand Bodhisattvas, all unable to slide back, endowed with the spells of supreme, perfect enlightenment, firmly standing in wisdom, who moved onward the never-deviating will of the law, who had propitiated many hundred thousands of Buddhas, who under many hundred thousands of Buddhas had planted the roots of goodness, had been intimate with many hundred thousands of Buddhas, were in body and mind fully penetrated with the feeling of charity, able in communicating the wisdom of the Tathagatas, very wise, having reached the perfection of wisdom, renowned in many hundred thousands of worlds, having saved many hundred thousand myriads of codas of beings, such as the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Mangusri, as Prince Royal, the Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas Avalakitesvara, Mahasthamaprapta, Sarvarthanaman, Nidhyadayukta, Anakshiptadhura, Ratnakandra, Bhashajuraga, Pradhanasura, Ratnakandra, Ratnaprabha, Purnakandra, Mahivikraman, Trelakavikraman, Anantavikraman, Mahapratibhana, Sadatazamatavhyata, Dharanadhara, Akshayamadi, Padmasri, Nakshatraraga, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Mathraya, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Singha. With them were also the sixteen virtuous men to begin with Bhadrapala, to wit, Bhadrapala, Ratnikara, Susarthavaha, Naradatta, Guhagupta, Varanadatta, Indradatta, Uttaramadi, Vaishamadi, Vardhamanamadi, Amagadarsan, Susamsthita, Suvakrantavikraman, Anupamamadi, Suryagarbha, and Dharnidhara, besides eighty thousand bodhisattvas, among whom the forementioned were the chiefs, further Sakra, the ruler of the celestials, with twenty thousand gods, his followers, such as the god Kandra, the moon, the god Surya, the sun, the god Samantagandha, the wind, the god Ratnaprabha, the god Avabhasaprabha, and others, further, the four great rulers of the cardinal points with thirty thousand gods in their train, viz. the great ruler Viradhaka, the great ruler Virupaksh, the great ruler Dhritarashtra, and the great ruler Viceravana, the god Isvara and the god Mahasvara, each followed by thirty thousand gods, further, 
Brahma Satampati and his 12,000 followers, the Brahmakayaka gods, amongst whom Brahma Sikhan and Brahma Jitish Prabha, with the other 12,000 Brahmakdayaka gods, together with the eight Naga kings and many hundred thousand myriads of Kodas of Nigas in their train, viz. The Naga king Nanda, the Naga king of Painanda, Sagara, Vasuki, Taxhaka, Manasvan, Anavatapta, and Utpalaka, further, the four Kinara kings with many hundred thousand myriads of Kodas of followers, viz. The Kinara king Druma, the Kinara king Mahadharma, the Kinara king Sudharma, and the Kinara king Dharmadhara, besides, the four divine beings. Called, Gandharvakayakas with many hundred thousand Gandharvs in their suite, viz. The Gandharv Manogya, the Gandharv Manogyasvara, the Gandharv Madhura, and the Gandharv Madhurasvara, further, the four chiefs of the demons followed by many hundred thousand myriads of Kodas of demons, viz. The chief of the demons Bali, Karaskandha, Vemakitri, and Rahu, along with the four Garuda chiefs followed by many hundred thousand myriads of Kodas of Garudas, viz. The Garuda chiefs Mahatigas, Mahakaya, Mahaparna, and Mahartipraptha. And with Agatha Satruhu, king of Magadha, the son of Vadahi. Now at that time it was that the Lord surrounded, attended, honored, revered, venerated, worshipped by the four classes of hearers, after expounding the Dharmapariya called the Great Exposition, a text of great development, serving to instruct bodhisattvas and proper to all Buddhas, sat cross-legged on the seat of the law and entered upon the meditation termed the station of the exposition of infinity, his body was motionless and his mind had reached perfect tranquility. And as soon as the Lord had entered upon his meditation, there fell a great rain of divine flowers, Mandaravasa and great Mandaravas, Mangas Hakas and great Mangas Hakas, covering the Lord and the four classes of hearers, while the whole Buddha field shook in six ways, it moved, removed, trembled, trembled from one end to the other, tossed, tossed along. Then did those who were assembled and sitting together in that congregation, monks, nuns, male and female lay devotees, gods, nagas, goblins, Gandharvs, demons, Garudas, Kinaras, great serpents, men, and beings not human, as well as governors of a region, rulers of armies and rulers of four continents, all of them with their followers, gaze on the Lord in astonishment, in amazement, in ecstasy. And at that moment there issued a ray from within the circle of hair between the eyebrows of the Lord. It extended over 1800,000 Buddha fields in the eastern quarter, so that all those Buddha fields appeared wholly illuminated by its radiance, down to the great hell. Aviki and up to the limit of existence. And the beings in any of the six states of existence became visible, all without exception. Likewise the Lord's Buddha staying, living, and existing in those Buddha fields became all visible, and the law preached by them could be entirely heard by all beings. And the monks, nuns, lay devotees male and female, yogins and students of yoga, those who had obtained the fruition, of the paths of sanctification, and those who had not, they, too, became visible. And the Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas in those Buddha fields who plied the Bodhisattva course with ability, due to their earnest belief in numerous and various lessons and the fundamental ideas, they, too, became all visible. Likewise the Lord's Buddhas in those Buddha fields who had reached final nirvana became visible, all of them. And the stupas made of jewels and containing the relics of the extinct Buddhas became all visible in those Buddha fields. Then rose in the mind of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Mithraya this thought, Oh how great a wonder does the Tathagata display! What may be the cause, what the reason of the Lord producing so great a wonder as this? And such astonishing, prodigious, inconceivable, powerful miracles now appear, although the Lord is absorbed in meditation. Why, let me inquire about this matter, who would be able here to explain it to me? He then thought, here is Mangusri, the Prince Royal, who has plied his office under former genus and planted the roots of goodness, while worshipping many Buddhas. This Mangusri, the Prince Royal, must have witnessed before such signs of the former Tathagatas, those Arhats, 
those perfectly. Enlightened Buddhas, of your he must have enjoyed the grand conversations on the law. Therefore will I inquire about this matter with Mangusri, the Prince Royal, and the four classes of the audience, monks, nuns, male and female lay devotees, numerous gods, nagas, goblins, gandharvs, demons, garudas, kinaras, great serpents, men, and beings not human, on seeing the magnificence of this great miracle of the Lord, were struck with astonishment, amazement, and curiosity, and thought, let us inquire why this magnificent miracle has been produced by the great power of the Lord. At the same moment, at that very instant, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Mithrayanu in his mind the thoughts arising in the minds of the four classes of hearers and he spoke to Mangusri, the Prince Royal, What, O Mangusri, is the cause, what is the reason of this wonderful, prodigious, miraculous shine having been produced by the Lord? Look, how these eighteen thousand Buddha fields appear variegated, extremely beautiful, directed by Tathagatas and superintended by Tathagatas. Then it was that Mithraya, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, addressed Mangusri, the Prince Royal, in the following stanzas. 1. Why, Mangusri, does this ray darted by the guide of men shine forth from between his brows? This single ray issuing from the circle of hair? And why this abundant rain of Mandaravas? 2. The gods, overjoyed, let drop Mangus Hakas and Sandal Powder, divine, fragrant, and delicious. 3. This earth is, on every side, replete with splendor, and all the four classes of the assembly are filled with delight, while the whole field shakes in six different ways, frightfully. 4. And that ray in the eastern quarter illuminates the whole of 18,000 Buddha fields, simultaneously, so that those fields appear as gold-colored. 5. The universe, as far as the hell, of Iki, and the extreme limit of existence, with all beings of those fields living in any of the six states of existence, those who are leaving one state to be born in another. 6. Their various and different actions in those states have become visible, whether they are in a happy, unhappy, low, eminent, or intermediate position, all that I see from this place. 7. I see also the Buddhas, those lions of kings, revealing and showing the essence of the law, comforting many codas of creatures and emitting sweet-sounding voices. 8. They let go forth, each in his own field, a deep, sublime, wonderful voice, while proclaiming the Buddha laws by means of myriads of codas of illustrations and proofs. 9. And to the ignorant creatures who are oppressed with toils and distressed in mind by birth and old age, they announce the bliss of rest, saying, This is the end of trouble, O monks. 10. And to those who are possessed of strength and vigor and who have acquired merit by virtue or earnest belief in the Buddhas, they show the vehicle of the Pratyeka Buddhas, by observing this rule of the law. 11. And the other sons of the Shugata who, Sriviner after superior knowledge, have constantly accomplished their various tasks, them also they admonish to enlightenment. 12. From this place, O Mangaposha, I see and hear such things and thousands of codas of other particulars besides, I will only describe some of them. 13. 1. See in many fields bodhisattvas by many thousands of codas, like sands of the Ganges, who are producing enlightenment according to the different degree of their power. 14. There are some who charitably bestow wealth, gold, silver, gold money, pearls, jewels, conch shells, stones, coral, male and female slaves, horses, and sheep. 15. As well as litters adorned with jewels. They are spending gifts with glad hearts, developing themselves for superior enlightenment, in the hope of gaining the vehicle. 16. Thus they think the best and most excellent vehicle in the whole of the threefold world is the Buddha vehicle magnified by the Shugatas. May I, forsooth, soon gain it after my spending such gifts. 17. Some give carriages yoked with four horses and furnished with benches, flowers, banners, and flags, others give objects made of precious substances. 18. Some, again, give their children and wives, others their own flesh, or, offer, when bitten, their hands, and feet.
striving to gain supreme enlightenment. 19 Some give their heads, others their eyes, others their dear own body, and after cheerfully bestowing their gifts they aspire to the knowledge of the Tathagatas. 20 Here and there, O Mangusri, I behold beings who have abandoned their flourishing kingdoms, harems, and continents, left all their counselors and kinsmen. 21 And betaken themselves to the guides of the world to ask for the most excellent law, for the sake of bliss, they put on reddish yellow robes, and shave hair and beard. 22 One see also many bodhisattvas like monks, living in the forest, and others inhabiting the empty wilderness, engaged in reciting and reading. 23 And some bodhisattvas I see, who, full of wisdom, or constancy, betake themselves to mountain caves, where by cultivating and meditating the Buddha knowledge they arrive at its perception. 24 Others who have renounced all sensual desires, by purifying their own self, have cleared their sphere and obtained the five transcendent faculties, live in the wilderness, as, true, sons of the Shugata. 25 Some are standing firm, the feet put together and the hands joined in token of respect towards the leaders, and are praising joyfully the king of the leading genus in thousands of stanzas. 26 Some thoughtful, meek, and tranquil, who have mastered the niceties of the course of duty, question the highest of men about the law, and retain in their memory what they have learned. 27 And I see here and there some sons of the principal Jina who, after completely developing their own self, are preaching the law to many codas of living beings with many myriads of illustrations and reasons. 28 Joyfully they proclaim the law, rousing many bodhisattvas, after conquering the evil one with his hosts and vehicles, they strike the drum of the law. 29 One see some sons of the Shugata, humble, calm, and quiet in conduct, living under the command of the Shugatas, and honored by men, gods, goblins, and titans. Thirty others, again, who have retired to woody thickets, are saving the creatures in the hells by emitting radiance from their body, and rouse them to enlightenment. Thirty-one There are some sons of the Jina who dwell in the forest, abiding in vigor, completely renouncing sloth, and actively engaged in walking, it is by energy that they are striving for supreme enlightenment. 32 Others complete their course by keeping a constant purity and an unbroken morality like Precious stones and jewels, by morality do these strive for supreme enlightenment. 33 Some sons of the Jina, whose strength consists in forbearance, patiently endure abuse, censure, and threats from proud monks. They try to attain enlightenment by dint of forbearance. 34 Further, I see bodhisattvas, who have forsaken all wanton pleasures, shun unwise companions and delight in having intercourse with genteel men, aryas. 35 Who, with avoidance of any distraction of thoughts and with attentive mind, during thousands of kodas of years have meditated in the caves of the wilderness, these strive for enlightenment by dint of meditation. 36 Some, again, offer in presence of the genus and the assemblage of disciples gifts, consisting, in food hard and soft, meat and drink, medicaments for the sick, in plenty and abundance. 37 Others offer in presence of the genus and the assemblage of disciples hundreds of kodas of clothes, worth thousands of kodas, and garments of priceless value. 38 They bestow in presence of the Shugatas hundreds of kodas of monasteries which they have caused to be built of precious substances and sandalwood, and which are furnished with numerous lodgings, or couches. 39 Some present the leaders of men and their disciples with neat and lovely gardens abounding with fruits and beautiful flowers, to serve as places of daily recreation. 40 When they have, with joyful feelings, made such various and splendid donations, they rouse their energy in order to obtain enlightenment. These are those who try to reach supreme enlightenment by means of charitableness. 41 Others set forth the law of quietness, by many myriads of illustrations and proofs, they preach it to thousands of codas of living beings, these are tending to supreme enlightenment by science. 42 There are, sons of the Shugata who try to reach enlightenment by wisdom, they understand the law of indifference and avoid acting at the antinomy, of things, 
unattached like birds in the sky. 43 Further, I see, O Mangaposha, many bodhisattvas who have displayed steadiness under the rule of the departed Shugatas, and now are worshipping the relics of the Jinas. 44 One see thousands of kodas of stupas, numerous as the sand of the Ganges, which have been raised by these sons of the Jina and now adorn kodas of grounds. 45 Those magnificent stupas, made of seven precious substances, with their thousands of kodas of umbrellas and banners, measure in height no less than 5,000 yoganas and 2,000 in circumference. 46 They are always decorated with flags, a multitude of bells is constantly heard sounding, men, gods, goblins, and titans pay their worship with flowers, perfumes, and music. 47 Such honor do the sons of the Shugata render to the relics of the Jinas, so that all directions of space are brightened as by the celestial coral trees in full blossom. 48 From this spot I behold all this, those numerous codas of creatures, both this world and heaven covered with flowers, owing to the single ray shot forth by the Jina. 49 Oh how powerful is the leader of men! How extensive and bright is his knowledge! That a single beam darted by him over the world renders visible so many thousands of fields. 50 We are astonished at seeing this sign and this wonder, so great, so incomprehensible. Explain me the matter, O Mangasvara. The sons of Buddha are anxious to know it. 51 The four classes of the congregation in joyful expectation gaze on thee, O hero, and on me, gladden, their hearts, remove their doubts, grant a revelation, O son of Shugata. 52 Why is it that the Shugata has now emitted such a light? Oh how great is the power of the leader of men! Oh how extensive and holy is his knowledge! 53 That one ray extending from him all over the world makes visible many thousands of fields. It must be for some purpose that this great ray has been emitted. 54 Is the Lord of men to show the primordial laws which he, the highest of men, discovered on the terrace of enlightenment? Or is he to prophesy the bodhisattvas their future destiny? 55 There must be a weighty reason why so many thousands of fields have been rendered visible, variegated, splendid, and shining with gems, while Buddhas of infinite sight are appearing. 56 Mithraya asks the son of Jina, men, gods, goblins, and titans, the four classes of the congregation, are eagerly awaiting what answer Mangasvara shall give in explanation. Whereupon Mangusri, the Prince Royal, addressed Mithraya, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, and the whole assembly of Bodhisattvas, in these words it is the intention of the Tathagata, young men of good family, to begin a grand discourse for the teaching of the law, to pour the great rain of the law, to make resound the great drum of the law, to raise the great banner of the law, to kindle the great torch of the law, to blow the great conch trumpet of the law, and to strike the great timbal of the law. Again, it is the intention of the Tathagata, young men of good family, to make a grand exposition of the law this very day. Thus it appears to me, young men of good family, as I have witnessed a similar sign of the former Tathagatas, the Arhats, the perfectly enlightened. Those former Tathagatas, and see, they, too, emitted a lustrous ray, and I am convinced that the Tathagata is about to deliver a grand discourse for the teaching of the law and make his grand speech on the law everywhere heard, he having shown such a foretoken. And because the Tathagata, and C, wishes that this Dharmapariya meeting opposition in all the world be heard. Everywhere, therefore does he display so great a miracle and this foretoken consisting in the luster occasioned by the emission of a ray. I remember, young men of good family, that in the days of yore, many immeasurable, inconceivable, immense, infinite, countless eons, more than countless eons ago, nay, long and very long before, there was born a Tathagata called Kandrasurya Pradipa, an Arhat, and C, endowed with science and conduct, a Shugata, knower of the world, an incomparable tamer of men, a teacher and ruler, of gods and men, a Buddha and Lord. He showed the law, he revealed the duteous course which is holy at its commencement, 
holy in its middle, holy at the end, good in substance and form, complete and perfect, correct and pure. That is to say, to the disciples he preached the law containing the four noble truths, and starting from the chain of causes and effects, tending to overcome birth, decrepitude, sickness, death, sorrow, lamentation, woe, grief, despondency, and finally leading to nirvana, and to the bodhisattvas he preached the law connected with the six perfections, and terminating in the knowledge of the omniscient, after the attainment of supreme, perfect enlightenment. Now, young men of good family, long before the time of that Tathagata Kandra Surya Pradipa, the Arhat, and C, there had appeared a Tathagata, and C, likewise called Kandra Surya Pradipa, after whom, O Ajita, there were twenty thousand Tathagatas, and C, all of them bearing the name of Kandra Surya Pradipa, of the same lineage and family name, to wit, of Bharadvaga. All those twenty thousand Tathagatas, O Ajita, from the first to the last, showed the law, revealed the course which is holy at its commencement, holy in its middle, holy at the end, and C and C. The aforesaid Lord Kandra Surya Pradipa, the Tathagata, and C, when a young prince and not yet having left home, to embrace the ascetic life, had eight sons, viz. The young princes Sumti, Anandamati, Ratnamati, Vaishamati, Vimadasamajitan, Goshamati, and Dharmamati. These eight young princes, Ajita, sons to the Lord Kandra Surya Pradipa, the Tathagata, had an immense fortune. Each of them was in possession of four great continents, where they exercised the kingly sway. When they saw that the Lord had left his home to become an ascetic, and heard that he had attained supreme, perfect enlightenment, they forsook all of them the pleasures of royalty and followed the example of the Lord by resigning the world, all of them strove to reach superior enlightenment and became preachers of the law. While constantly leading a holy life, those young princes planted roots of goodness under many thousands of Buddhas. It was at that time, Ajita, that the Lord Kandra Surya Pradipa, the Tathagata, and C, after expounding the Dharmapariyaya called the Great Exposition, a text of great extension, serving to instruct bodhisattvas and proper to all Buddhas, at the same moment and instant, at the same gathering of the classes of hearers, sat cross-legged on the same seat of the law, and entered upon the meditation termed the station of the exposition of infinity, his body was motionless, and his mind had reached perfect tranquility. And as soon as the Lord had entered upon meditation, there fell a great rain of divine flowers, mandaravas and great mandaravas, mangas hakas and great mangas hakas, covering the Lord and the four classes of hearers, while the whole Buddha field shook in six ways, it moved, removed, trembled, trembled from one end to the other, tossed, tossed along. Then did those who were assembled and sitting together at that congregation, monks, nuns, male and female lay devotees, gods, nagas, goblins, gandharvs, demons, garudas, kinaras, great serpents, men, and beings not human, as well as governors of a region, rulers of armies and rulers of four continents, all of them with their followers gaze on the Lord in astonishment, in amazement, in ecstasy. And at that moment there issued a ray from within the circle of hair between the eyebrows of the Lord. It extended over 1800,000 Buddha fields in the eastern quarter, so that all those Buddha fields appeared wholly illuminated by its radiance, just like the Buddha fields do now, O Ajita. At that juncture, Ajita, there were twenty kodas of bodhisattvas following the Lord. All hearers of the law in that assembly, on seeing how the world was illuminated by the luster of that ray, felt astonishment, amazement, ecstasy, and curiosity. Now it happened, Ajita, that under the rule of the aforesaid Lord there was a bodhisattva called Varaprabha, who had eight hundred pupils. It was to this bodhisattva Varaprabha that the Lord, on rising from his meditation, revealed the Dharmapariyaya called the Lotus of the True Law. He spoke during fully sixty intermediate kalpas. Always sitting on the same seat, with immovable body and tranquil mind. And the whole assembly continued sitting on the same seats, listening to the preaching of the Lord for sixty intermediate kalpas, 
there being not a single creature in that assembly who felt fatigue of body or mind. As the Lord Kandrasurya Pradipa, the Tathagata, and C, during sixty intermediate kalpas had been expounding the Dharmaparyaya called the Lotus of the True Law, a text of great development, serving to instruct bodhisattvas and proper to all Buddhas, he instantly announced his complete nirvana to the world, including the gods, maras, and brahmas, to all creatures, including ascetics, brahmans, gods, men, and demons, saying, Today, O monks, this very night, in the middle watch, will the Tathagata, by entering the element of absolute nirvana, become wholly extinct. Thereupon, Ajita, the Lord Kandrasurya Pradipa, the Tathagata, and C, predestinated the Bodhisattva called Srigarbha to supreme, perfect enlightenment, and then spoke thus to the whole assembly, O monks, this Bodhisattva Srigarbha here shall immediately after me attain supreme, perfect enlightenment, and become Vimalanitra, the Tathagata, and C. Thereafter, Ajita, that very night, at that very watch, the Lord Kandrasurya Pradipa, the Tathilgata, and C., became extinct by entering the element of absolute nirvana. And the aforementioned Dharmaparyaya, termed the Lotus of the True Law, was kept in memory by the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Varaprabha, during eighty intermediate kalpas did the Bodhisattva Varaprabha keep and reveal the commandment of the Lord who had entered nirvana. Now it so happened, Ajita, that the eight sons of the Lord Kandrasurya Pradipa, Madhi and the rest, were pupils to that very Bodhisattva Varaprabha. They were by him made ripe for supreme, perfect enlightenment, and in after times they saw and worshipped many hundred thousand myriads of Kodas of Buddhas, all of whom had attained supreme, perfect enlightenment, the last of them being Dipankara, the Tathilgata, and C. Amongst those eight pupils there was one Bodhisattva who attached an extreme value to gain, honor, and praise, and was fond of glory, but all the words and letters one taught him faded, from his memory, did not stick. So he got the appellation of Yasaskama. He had propitiated many hundred thousand myriads of Kodas of Buddhas by that root of goodness, and afterwards esteemed, honored, respected, revered, venerated, worshipped them. Perhaps, Ajita, thou feelest some doubt, perplexity, or misgiving that in those days, at that time, there was another Bodhisattva Mahasattva Varaprabha, preacher of the law. But do not think so. Why? Because it is. Myself who in those days, at that time, was the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Varaprabha, preacher of the law, and that Bodhisattva named Yasaskama, the lazy one, it is thyself, Ajita, who in those days, at that time, were the Bodhisattva named Yasaskama, the lazy one. And so, Ajita, having once seen a similar foretoken of the Lord, I infer from a similar ray being emitted just now, that the Lord is about to expound the Dharmapariyaya called the Lotus of the True Law. And on that occasion, in order to treat the subject more copiously, Mangusri, the Prince Royal, uttered the following stanzas. 57 I remember a past period, inconceivable, Illimite Kalpas ago, when the highest of beings, the jina of the name of Kandrasurya Pradipa, was in existence. 58 He preached the true law, he, the leader of creatures, he educated an infinite number of kodas of beings, and roused inconceivably many bodhisattvas to acquiring supreme Buddha knowledge. 59 And the eight sons born to him, the leader, when he was prince royal, no sooner saw that the great sage had embraced ascetic life, than they resigned worldly pleasures and became monks. 60 And the Lord of the world proclaimed the law, and revealed to thousands of codas of living beings the sutra, the development, which by name is called the excellent exposition of infinity. 61 Immediately after delivering his speech, the leader crossed his legs and entered upon the meditation of the excellent exposition of the infinite. There on his seat of the law the eminent seer continued absorbed in meditation. 62 And there fell a celestial rain of mandaravas, while the drums, of heaven, resounded without being struck, the gods and elves in the sky paid honor to the highest of men. 63 And simultaneously all the fields, 
a Buddha, began trembling. A wonder it was, a great prodigy. Then the chief emitted from between his brows one extremely beautiful ray. 64 which moving to the eastern quarter. Glittered, illuminating the world all over the extent. Of 18,000 fields. It manifested the vanishing and appearing of beings. 65 some of the fields then seemed jeweled, others showed the hue of lapis lazuli, all splendid, extremely beautiful, owing to the radiance of the ray from the leader. 66 gods and men, as well as Nagas, Goblins, Gandharvs, Nymphs, Kinaras, and those occupied with serving the Shugata became visible in the spheres and paid their devotion. 67 The Buddhas also, those self-born beings, appeared of their own accord, resembling golden columns, like unto a golden disc, within lapis lazuli, they revealed the law in the midst of the assembly. 68 The disciples, indeed, are not to be counted, the disciples of Shugata are numberless. Yet the luster of the ray renders them all visible in every field. 69 Energetic, without breach or flaw in their course, similar to gems and jewels, the sons of the leaders of men are visible in the mountain caves where T. are dwelling. 70 Numerous Bodhisattvas, like the sand of the Ganges, who are spending all their wealth in giving alms, who have the strength of patience, are devoted to contemplation and wise, become all of them visible by that ray. 71 Immovable, unshaken, firm in patience, devoted to contemplation, and absorbed in meditation are seen the true sons of the Shugatas while they are striving for supreme enlightenment by dint of meditation. 72 They preach the law in many spheres, and point to the true, quiet, spotless state they know. Such is the effect produced by the power of the Shugata. 73 And all the four classes of heroes on seeing the power of the mighty Kendrar Katapa were filled with joy and asked one another, How is this? 74 And soon afterwards, as the leader of the world, worshipped by men, gods, and goblins, rose from his meditation, he addressed his son Varaprabha, the wise bodhisattva and preacher of the law. 75 Thou art wise, the eye and refuge of the world, Thou art the trustworthy keeper of my law, and canst bear witness as to the treasure of laws which I am to lay bare to the will of living beings. 76 Then, after rousing and stimulating, praising, and lauding many bodhisattvas, did the jina proclaim the supreme laws during fully sixty intermediate kalpas. 77 And whatever excellent supreme law was proclaimed by the lord of the world while continuing sitting on the very same seat, was kept. In memory by Varaprabha, the son of Jina, the preacher of the law. 78 And after the Jina and leader had manifested the supreme law and stimulated the numerous crowd, he spoke, that day, towards the world including the gods, as follows. 79 I have manifested the rule of the law, I have shown the nature of the law, now, O monks, it is the time of my nirvana, this very night, in the middle watch. 80 Be zealous and strong in persuasion, apply yourselves to my lessons, for, the genas, the great seers, are but rarely met with in the lapse of myriads of codas of eons. 81 The many sons of Buddha were struck with grief and filled with extreme sorrow when they heard the voice of the highest of men announcing that his nirvana was near at hand. 82 To comfort so inconceivably many codas of living beings the king of kings said, Be not afraid. O monks, after my nirvana there shall be another Buddha. 83 The wise Bodhisattva Srigarbha, after finishing his course in faultless knowledge, shall reach highest, supreme enlightenment, and become a jina under the name of Vimalagranitra. 84 That very night, in the middle watch, he met complete extinction, like a lamp when the cause, of its burning, is exhausted. His relics were distributed, and of his stupas there was an infinite number of myriads of kodas. 85 The monks and nuns at the time being, who strove after supreme, highest enlightenment, numerous as sand of the Ganges, applied themselves to the commandment of the Shugata. 86 And the monk who then was the preacher of the law and the keeper of the law, Varaprabha, expounded for fully eighty intermediate kalpas the highest laws according to the commandment, of the Shugata. 
87 he had 800 pupils, who all of them were by him brought to full development. They saw many kodas of Buddhas, great sages, whom they worshipped. 88 by following the regular course they became Buddhas in several spheres, and as they followed one another in immediate succession, they successively foretold each other's future destiny to Buddhaship. 89 The last of these Buddhas following one another was Dipankara. He, the supreme god of gods, honored by crowds of sages, educated thousands of kodas of living beings. 90 Among the pupils of Varaprabha, the son of Jina, at the time of his teaching the law, was one slothful, covetous, greedy of gain and cleverness. 91 He was also excessively desirous of glory, but very fickle, so that the lessons dictated to him. And his own reading faded from his memory as soon as learned. 92 His name was Yasiskama, by which he was known everywhere. By the accumulated merit of that good action, spotted as it was. 93 He propitiated thousands of kodas of Buddhas, whom he rendered ample honor. He went through the regular course of duties and saw the present Buddha Sakyasimha. 94 He shall be the last to reach superior enlightenment and become a lord known by the family name of Mithraya, who shall educate thousands of kodas of creatures. 95 He who then, under the rule of the extinct Chugata, was so slothful, was thyself, and it was I who then was the preacher of the law. 96 As on seeing a foretoken of this kind I recognize a sign such as I have seen manifested of your, therefore, and on that account I know. 97 That decidedly the chief of Jinas, the supreme king of the Sakyas, the all-seeing, who knows the highest truth, is about to pronounce the excellent Satra which I have heard before. 98 That very sign displayed at present is a proof of the skillfulness of the leaders, the lion of the Sakyas is to make an exhortation, to declare the fixed nature of the law. 99 Be well prepared and well minded, join your hands, he who is affectionate and merciful to the world is going to speak, is going to pour the endless rain of the law and refresh those that are waiting for enlightenment. 100 And if some should feel doubt, uncertainty, or misgiving in any respect, then the wise one shall remove it for his children, the bodhisattvas here striving after enlightenment. And LSX01.